A few weeks ago, a partnership was announced between Gran Turismo and Getty Images. At the time, a lot of people didn't know what this was all about. A lot of people didn't understand where these images would be used, why this was made in the first place, and yeah, a lot of people didn't get it. So I decided to reach out to Clive Rose. Clive Rose is a good friend of mine, and he also happens to be one of the best sports photographers in the world. He is a longtime Gran Turismo fan, and he was instrumental in forming this partnership between the two organizations. So I've been wanting to make videos for a while now, which go more in depth into the topics of the day that we cover on GT Planet, and I thought this would be a good place to start. Without further ado, here's my interview with Clive. Hello, Clive. Thanks for joining me today. Hello, First of all, tell us a bit uh, about yourself and, and who you are. Sure, yeah. So, you know, as you know, uh, my name is Clive Rose. Um, I've been a sports photographer for the last 25 plus years, um, working for Getty Images for the last 17. Um, initially in motorsport, uh, but I actually joined Getty Images originally to um, work in other areas of you know sport, um, like the Olympics, like the Football World Cup, um, and just kind of really, you know, spread my skill set around and not just be limited to motorsport and uh, Formula One. I mean, I you know I still love Formula One, and I and I do cover. Uh, some races each year, along with, you know, some GT events, you know, maybe Le Mans, I'm hoping to do Le Mans this year. So sort of I got into photography because it was a, you know, sort of amateur passion of mine. And then I was able to combine it with uh, sort of motorsport and eventually get to Formula One, which was which was really exciting um, across the best part of um, a decade or so. Um, and now with the partnership with Gran Turismo, I'm I'm able to sort of you know, marry up, you know, sort of another passion of mine, which is obviously the Gran Turismo uh, franchise. Yeah, well, we've got some of your some of your photographs up here uh, on, on the side. I mean, and there I'm looking at them and, and I'm just reminded of, uh, especially with the Gran Turismo World Tour, just how how influential the photography for these events is. And you've taken some of the most iconic uh, photographs uh, from the Gran Turismo World Tour over the last several years, and uh, including some of these, you know, <laughs> amazing moments that people remember uh, in game. So um, I guess, first of all, let's talk about, uh, you know, Gran Turismo. How did you come to get involved with them uh, as, as a Getty photographer? And, you know, what, what does Getty do? What kind of service do they provide to Gran Turismo and to the World Tour and that sort of thing? Probably my first proper interaction with the Gran Turismo game was at the Japanese Grand Prix in, um, I can't remember whether it was 97, at the end of 97, I think it probably would have been 98 because it didn't come out until December in 97, did it, the game in Japan. So, um, but I was at the Japanese Grand Prix, at, funnily enough, at a Sony party and yeah. they had uh, two consoles in like, at this party. and. I was just like, I just, I just wasn't interested in the party. I was just playing, the, you know, these concerts, trying to get the best time of the night. And, uh, you know, for me, so that was my first real exposure, you know, uh, sort of to it. And, you know, from that point onwards, we used to take, you know, the console to F1 testing and, you know, sort of me and some of the guys would be trying to beat each other's times around, you know, the tracks in, in certain cars, you know, the Supras of the day and all the rest of it. Um, and, you know, it was a real kind of, you know, uh, you know, sort of cult thing at the time, you know, and obviously, you know, sort of as the games have progressed and the graphics have got better and, um, you know, all the online play comes in and stuff, it just, I mean, the whole thing is just, it's just brilliant. And then with, you know, GT4 came the first kind of proper photo mode, you know, um, to play around with. Um, which I was fascinated by because I was like, somebody's actually taken the time to make, you know, an in-game, you know, photo mode. And that, you know, passion shines through with, you know, Kazanori because he is such a, you know, a sort of passionate photographer himself. And, you know, I, it's quite interesting how games today are really starting to prioritize the photo modes in these, in these, you know, titles, where when you think back to sort of Gran Turismo 4, you know, 
they kind of led the way really with that you know sort of that individual passion that was put into that game um to where it is now i mean it's it, you know it's just incredible really um so when gran turismo sport came out on on the ps4 um i obviously you know played that game um became very familiar with the photo mode on it um and then watched with interest as the online championship um came about and i was quite engrossed in it and i'd, I'd kind of you know with formula one when you're around something a lot for so long with all the changes um i kind of you become a little bit you know sort of stayed with it a, a bit i was a little bit i was looking for you know for something else and i was i was off you know photographing other things and then you know i started watching these uh, gt regional events and i was i was really impressed with the production values of that and i saw all these you know st sort of stories developing i watched the world finals in 2018 you know which igor won and um i thought you know what a fantastic product that is you know it is it is a great thing especially coming from where the game come from you know sort of nearly what 20 years ago is it you know yeah um you know i was thinking there's a lot of people watching this and this actually has an element of news value you know and i was looking at the viewing figures and you know quite honestly i don't i think a lot of the online races these days although their production values are high you know i think i think they generally aspire to to sort of be and look as good as what gran turismo does you know and i think that's like something to be cherished um you know quite honestly and i just thought what a fantastic thing these stories that are evolving as we saw in in 2019 with uh, mikhail and igor in new york you know things like that to me are kind of important to document and watching the series i was thinking this can actually be shot in game as well so i saw that the you know the guys at polyphony were doing race reports with in-game imagery and i just thought what a fantastic thing that is to to sort of record that story about the fia gran turismo championships and the evolution of this new um era of sort of motorsport and i just thought it was really important to sort of document it really um and i didn't want it to sort of drift by and and you know we look back now at black and white photographs from the 1950s of the start of the Formula One championship. And, you know, we look back in awe and think, oh, well, these are these are great, you know, and obviously it was different back then. But I was just thinking, well, this is the new, you know, sort of, this is a new era of motorsport right here. Are we documenting this? You know, is is somebody telling this story? So that was my main thing was we have this fantastic in-game, um, you know, photography mode um how can we bring that to the masses you know um and it was it was really just kind of sort of marrying the two up really um and you know like thankfully it's it's actually sort of worked out quite well i think yeah so how does something like this actually come about so did you you went to kazunori yamauchi and and you said I want to take photos of your game and put them in the Getty yeah. Images library. What was that? What was of, that process yeah, like? Yeah, kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much, uh, pretty nerve wracking. I can tell you. Um, no, originally, uh, so I had to, I had to come up with an image that would kind of resonate with the people at Getty Images. You know, um, so I took um, an image from the Austrian uh, track with one of the G, uh, the nissan gt car which we've got uh, going around here and it's a shot that i've done in real life and it's a shot that you know it's quite a common image which is why i used it because i wanted to sort of show that if i show you this picture can you tell the difference that it's real or not you know and and sure enough i i shot the picture and i took the you know the image in into into the office and you know i showed the you know i was like you know so what do you think of this? And they were like, well, I don't remember you going to Austria recently to sort of shoot that GT3, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, sort of GT car. So, so, so what are you on about? I said, well, this is, I shot this in Gran Turismo. And 
he was blown away, you know, uh, which is exactly the desired effect I wanted. Um, I just said to him, you, you can't tell the difference. It was so real. It's a simple picture. It's not a clever picture. It's not, you know, it's not, a, it's not trying to be some fancy creative picture. It's just a simple picture, but you couldn't tell the difference. And that was the key point I was trying to make. So I said to him or them, you know, guys, this is evolving right before our eyes. Um, and the imagery is completely comparable to real life, you know, and this is, and this is, you know, 2018 now, you know, so just going back to that original picture that I was you know, telling you about it, it's quite interesting that certain titles come out in this year, 2020, and they were using the same angle to compare between the game and the recent Austrian Grand Prix. And I still think the the four year old technology looks more convincing, to be honest. So that just <laughs> shows you, but it just shows you how far ahead of the curve that, you know, uh, Gran Turismo Sport on the PS4 was, you know, and how much they invested in that to get that to look real. And I just wanted to give that an audience, you know, like it, it needs an audience. Um, and that was my primary motive. So from there, I, uh, I reached out uh, to some of the guys um, who, who run the world tour. And we had a, you know, we had some calls and had a chat um, and I explained the philosophy behind it really. And I, and I think, I think the series was, was ready to sort of project a, a little bit more. Um, I know that a lot of people in this world probably don't value photography. It's all about video these days, isn't it? Streaming video and, uh, you know, content on YouTube and Twitch and stuff. And the stills is a little bit of a poor cousin. But actually, if you take a moment to look through social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you know, very much the same way when you pick up a newspaper, the first thing you see is the picture. But for some reason, you know, there's this kind of we don't value photography, you know, we're, it's, it's a sort of, yeah, well, you know, we'll do it and we'll just use a few pictures, a, a few snaps. And, uh, you know, we'll just, you know, it's, it, it's a bit like being at a wedding when nobody wants to be in the pictures, you know, it's yeah. like, oh, it's, the, you know, <laughs> it's like a bit, commodity. Right? <laughs> exactly. You know? yeah. um, so I kind of went to them and said, look, guys, we, you know, we'd like to sort of, you know, sort of project this series to a broader or you know a br sorry a broader audience you know um and i think i think they they were ready for that next step um and we had a a chat um with uh yamuchi san and uh nurburgring um last last year and i had to sit down and i had i had the opportunity to explain the, you know the philosophy and the concept to him and it literally took him maybe he was really busy i, I don't know but um it literally took him like two minutes and he was like yeah i understand i i totally get that and in a way i didn't i didn't really expect anything less because of course he's going to understand what we're trying to do because this is why probably he put it in the game in the first place you know because that's how forward thinking you know these guys are aren't they you and know he's quite so a photographer was, himself yeah you know, yeah, yeah he is yeah, yeah yeah and he is you know he is very interested in photography always you know every time he he comes to the world tour he'll have his camera bag <laughs> on his shoulder i think it's brilliant i think it's inspiring you know I, it, it just makes me worry because i'm like going he must be looking at us like running around like lunatics trying to cap, like you know capture every angle and he must think we're mad but um when he's just cruising around but no i know i know that he understands um and I'm just really grateful to have the opportunity to sort of, you know, uh, broadcast the story of the world tour. You know, obviously we're in a bit of a situation now where, it, you know, it's not necessarily happening for a while, but we all know that it will, you know, it will come back. It's, it's such a good product. They're just waiting for the right, the right time and for, you know, for everything to be okay. But even, even in lockdown, you know, we've been, working on the on the top 16 superstars um you know imagery because again that tells a story um you know and when we get back to real life racing we will bring the two 
you know, real world imagery and, and virtual imagery back together again. So it's great to have been able to continue telling that story in, you know, during the last five or six months um, and it not come to a grinding halt like a lot of it has done in, in other areas. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about the images themselves after you take them what actually happens, you know, because a, a lot of people who maybe don't work in the media industry, you know, they don't really understand what, you know, Getty Images does, what kind of service it provides, you know, what, so when they, when they go into the Getty database, you know, who are those images for? How do you intend for them to be used? Uh, what's, what, yeah. what comes next? So, you know, for the last sort of 25 years, you know, Getty Images has, has kind of innovated in the photography uh, sphere with, new areas, new techniques. Um, and this is just an extension of, you know, of that, you know, working with virtual um, imagery, which in itself has got a very big scene behind it and has been around for, for you know, a long time already. Um, it, but it probably hasn't been embraced in the way that we're, you know, in what we're trying to do. Um, so, you know, we have um, sort of, thousands and thousands of customers like sort of globally um, in the sort of editorial news and sport commercial customers you know which are like manufacturers of, of cars and and you know magazines that require content you know to tell a story um, and also promote their brands so what you know we basically do is we take the content from you know uh, sort of news and sport or you know creative um, imagery that could be used in you know advertising and stuff and we are able to distribute that globally you know to whoever might want it um, you know sort of we are cut up into into sort of like little divisions you know, you know we have the news and the sport you know, and the commercial, um, you know, sections as well. And it's really for a whole range of uses. You know, it's not just for pictures for newspapers or, or pictures for magazines. We work with a lot of, you know, rights holders, uh, people like FIFA, um, the IOC, you know, people who want their content to be broadcasted globally and taken to, you know, the biggest audience, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and I uh, see I've got the, uh, the the database here on uh, on Getty Images. I mean, and you can see just how many photographs you guys have. I think there's what uh, over 19, 1900 images here. So you know, there's uh, there's there's quite a bit of content no. uh, available. Yeah. But of course, when you made this announcement, a lot of people who didn't know about Getty and you know they they looked at these pictures and obviously they're great and. Uh, then they went and they saw some of the prices, you know, it's $500 for an image, but you know, that, that's, that's really sort of, uh, these are for, these aren't necessarily for the average person to be purchasing, right? I mean, that's this fine. is really for like an institution, a newspaper, anyone who wants to uh, cover these events and have high quality images available to them. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, most of our customer base is on a subscription model, which mm. will have differing um, sort of rights to usage. Um, you know, some people need them for TV broadcast. Some people just need them for digital print media. Mm. So there's all different, you know, there's all different levels of, you know, uh, subscription, you know, for you, if you so kind of want that. Right. So mm. there is a kind of walk up price, you know, very much the same as if you would walk up into a hotel and ask, you know, or just say, hey, you know, so I need a room for the night. And yeah, sure. So, you know, so that's going to cost a lot of money if you'd have booked it in advance or if you were like part of the the, the points program, you you know, you would have uh, you would have got it for half the price or a lot less. <laughs> right. So yeah. it's not it doesn't it kind of, it, you know, it's it's not really. Of course, if somebody if there was a, you know, a wealthy person out there that really wanted a certain image, and just to walk up and buy that image, then they can pay the money. It's like DLC, you know. It's right. like you, you can either, you can you can either you can either grind for the car, or you can just you can just pay for it. You know, it, it's it's a similar it's a similar thing. It's exactly. A, it's a bit of a it's a bit of an easy an easy target, but it you know unfortunately, 
you know, but that's the world we, we kind of live in. And you know what? You can still look at the pictures if you want for nothing. You don't have to, or, you know, you don't yeah. have to, to spend $450, you know. it's Well, it's, and from Gran Turismo's perspective, you know, like you said, most of your clients will have a sort of a, a subscription to, to Getty so that they absolutely. can, they have access to the entire database and they can use them editorially yeah. as much as they want. So for them, that's if right. they're writing a, a, an article about a world tour event or, you know, the FIA or any, anything Gran Turismo related, they'll have access to these data, these, this database and they just go in and they, they, you know, click on the images they want and they just use them. So that's right. Yeah. You know, a lot of the usage at the moment is actually, you know, generic usage for mm. sim racing, mm, you, know, yeah. so, you know, somebody needs a, you know, a, a decent sim racing image to go with a piece they're writing about the explosion in sim racing. So they will, they will already have all this content to, to reference and you know and to use from i mean you know so that's just a very quick you know kind of example but you know I, so all the images are keyworded to, you know to um the the manufacturer and and what you know well like i was, I was noticing mode, here on, uh, what on rate. this yeah. image here it's uh, you actually tagged yeah. it in arona italy here it's yes. lago yeah. maggiore <laughs> so yeah well no the reason is is because that is the closest real world um town it's it, it, it's kind of like a geo tag and everything needs to be placed somewhere in the world if you see what i mean otherwise <laughs> right. and that and that is one of the challenges that you know starting to work in this space is obviously posed to us is that a lot of things that we do in the virtual space are not necessarily real world places mm. so we have had to sort of come up with a solution uh to sort of at least place it roughly where it is so that everything still continues to work but in the future um we're looking to build in systems that will recognize that this was shot you know in in the in the virtual space as opposed to the real world but it's uh yeah i mean it's it's throwing up all sorts of interesting uh, conundrums to solve but that's just part of the process of of normalizing sim racing virtual photography as a whole it's not you know, obviously this is based around sim racing, but, but what about all of the people out there that shoot, you know, virtual photography in all those other titles, like really creative stuff, you know, um, up until now, and obviously there's licensing issues and bits and pieces, but you need to start that conversation to maybe give those people who want a professional outlet for that. Um, you need to start that conversation, you know, can we do this? And, that, and that's kind of what we've done with Gran Turismo. It, it's, you know, in the beginning, you're saying, okay, guys, that we want to we want to take these pictures in in Gran Turismo, and we can license them, and we can use them to illustrate the FIA Gran Turismo Championship. And you know, so people look at you funny, but you have to you have to start these conversations. You have to you have to get the ball rolling, and you have to place importance uh, you know upon the imagery and you have to normalize it you know um and i'm pretty sure that you know the teams you know we've got some pictures there you know sort of williams esports for Loche, you know people like that you know team redline you know i think they have sponsors too you know and people that they need to give an audience to so i i i kind of you know believe that we're actually providing a little bit of a service to give them some airtime through through stills imagery you know and of course there's there's lots of um you know people creating sim racing imagery that as well but just to it's it's just another part of the jigsaw puzzle to sort of um you know give it an audience and, and broadcast it yeah well you know you talk about normalizing virtual photography and um there's got to be a lot of similarities between you know photographing in the game and in real life you're obviously one of the best sports photographers in the world and you've photographed motorsport at the highest level you know so sort of what are some of the similarities and differences between shooting in the game versus real life yeah i think i think time actually mm -hmm. uh for me I, I've, I've been asked this this question a lot you know it's it's a bit of an obvious i guess question or comparison but you know the, you, in the virtual world you have you know you can move around pretty much anywhere you want and you you don't really miss any pictures 
in the virtual world because you're able to control the replay and like pause and, and rewind, but you're still bound by the time constraints of deadline. You know, um, people, the whole point of Getty Images being involved is that we can deliver that story like Igor and Mikhail in, in, in Spa. We can deliver it almost straight away. Obviously, you know, there's a bit of a delay, but, but generally speaking, we are delivering that in the same timeline as what reports, news reports um, are being written about it. And then they have the images to go with it, you know, and that that's the that's what we're bringing to this is is that, you know, delivering the images quickly. And it's not just done by me, it's done by, you know, a whole team of people. We have like editors sort of all over the world. Some, you know, some guys will come to the events, we'll have additional photographers if we can't be in two places at the same time we need it from two different angles you know and it's really um just you know being able to, you know, to de deliver that in-game imagery quickly which is exactly the same as in real life when i when i shoot you know the world cup soccer final mm -hmm. i have two cameras and in those cameras i have two cables and every frame that i take is it, you know is automatically going down the pipe to an editor that's that's mm. probably on a different continent and wow. you know and that's being like live edited within a minute if not less to be honest um wow. especially for a world cup final but you know and it's very similar to that even at the world tour events you know mm. we're taking pictures of you know of the guys driving or whatever's happening on the the show floor but we're sending the pictures from the cameras to the editors and it's being edited live you know so that you have you know anybody that's writing about it or, or trying to tell this story you know has those pictures straight away you know next week is no good right you know even tomorrow is no good you know there's time zones all around the world so it might be nighttime where you are but it's the next it's the next day somewhere else i know this is the obvious thing to say but but yeah. there's a deadline all the time so this is the philosophy that we're kind of bringing to it is that this you know if you're going to tell this story you need to you need to do it you know in the same way that you would tell a real world you know event um and i think anything less than that it just isn't just isn't good enough in this day and age people want imagery straight away you know um and stills imagery is is very quick to send you know obviously video takes time to mm. produce and edit and yes you can have like live broadcast and stuff that's fine but once that live broadcast is done you know, there's all the, the the websites and reports and bits and pieces that you need stills imagery to go with. So, you know, that's what we're trying to bring to the package, basically. Yeah, well, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, because with, with GT Planet, of course, you know, we're writing the race reports and things about happen, things that have happened yeah. at these World Tour events. And, and we've talked about this before. You know, it's it's important to have that imagery and but it has to be generated. You know, somebody has to somebody has to take it. It has to be, you know, edited and organized and that sort of thing and, and categorized. And so that's really all part of the service that that Getty provides. So. Um, yeah. one of the, one of the nice things about, um, virtual photography as well, and this is another thing that we've, we've talked about is how it has, uh, in many ways it's, it's sort of, uh, sort of democratized photography because typically, uh, something like formula one or uh, any type of, you know, racing motorsport event can only be shot by a high level professional photographer who's credentialed and has a lot of experience, but now anyone with a copy of GT Sport basically can go out and 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 make their own photos and learn about photography, figure out how to get the best shot, you know. And and do you see do you see that this uh, Gran Turismo maybe creating helping create not just a new generation of drivers but maybe a new generation of sports photographers as well who can use it to to learn about the craft? Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. You know, it's interesting. I. I do actually take some time to, to look um, in the game, like down through the, the race photos and uh, scapes section to see to see the creativity and become inspired as well. Mm. You know, um, yes, you know, I have been, I am a professional photographer um, and I have, you know, had a lot of experience, but that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean that we're better than anybody that has been working in the game or, or who, 
you know, indeed has the, the time to spend on one image or two images, you know, to make a fantastically interesting picture, you know, sort of where we are, we are generating really nice content that can be used quickly, you know, but if, if you've got a day to, to work on one image, of course, you're going to be able to make like a stunning picture, you know, um, and I think that it will, it will certainly inspire people to, you know, to, to sort of take up photography in real life. The only the only barrier being in real life is is obviously the cost of photography equipment. You know, um, but to be honest, from my experience, you know, if you if you're a good photographer, if you have a good photographic eye, you can still take great pictures on an iPhone. So the equipment is is one you know sort of excuse. You know, if somebody bought the game, to, you know, to play it, to to drive you know the tracks etc and enjoy it that way but then found photography i think that that would be that'd be brilliant and i'm sure it's happened you know i'm absolutely sure it has and i would like to think that as part of our relationship with gran turismo that maybe well i certainly would like to, to you know sort of move this aspect of crossover community crossover um forward you know and maybe give opportunities to those guys who are really motivated to move into the real world photography you know um i mean we can certainly provide opportunity i'm sure uh, through like various relationships we have um but like with sim races i actually think that i think you know they sort of the whole gamer to racer thing is is has been around a while now I think we're we're personally like reaching a stage where people want to be sim racers in like in their own right, and I actually think that if we can move this uh, virtual photography, commercial virtual photography, where somebody can actually do it and and earn a living from it forward um, through this association, I you know I think that that, that you know sort of that would be just as as cool as well, you know. And so from you know from my point of view, I'll be certainly trying to keep that conversation going um and it has started um and see where we end up with that well i think uh i think that's a, a good good note to end on clive it's uh i really appreciate you coming on here and and talking about this because i think when the announcement came out a lot of people a lot of people didn't really know what to make of it they didn't really know what it meant and so uh, i'm really really glad you were able to come on here and uh explain it in your own words tell us about what's going on and how this came about i think i think that'll help people understand it much better uh, thank you very much for uh, for giving me the opportunity it's an absolute pleasure to be on here with you oh well, thank you clive and and hopefully i'll get to see you again soon with the world tour events hope they can get started back up uh, as soon as possible sure let's hope so all right thanks clive have a great day thanks a lot <laughs> thank Cheers, you bye-bye <laughs>